So I guess that didn't take that long at all, actually, because uh, I officially have not one, not two, but uh, I want to say around three to four five star reads of the year. And that's saying something. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the recent books that I've read, my February wrap up. February was a great month. It's kind of funny because the trajectory of the books that I read did not expect it at all. I, I read four books in three days and that was like the last week, the last few days of February. And I did it. Four books, three days, approximately 784,000 words, equivalent of 2,400 pages, according to Google. So I read a total of five books um, last month in February. I still cannot stop thinking about the last book in the series that I read. The Journey, insane. Anyways, before we move on, cutting to Future Elias for today's video sponsor. Hi. Hello, before we get further into the video, I would kind of like to thank today's video sponsor, Book of the Month. So BOTM and I, we go way back. We're on a first name basis already. If you didn't know, they're essentially a book subscription service where every month you get a blue box just like so. Every month, their team diligently curates and picks through hundreds of new and early release titles so that you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Basically doing all of the work just for you. One of the absolute best things about Book of the Month is their pricing. For a new release, a hardcover book, you can get your first book for only $9.99 with my code Elias. They have some really great selections this month, especially a new most anticipated thriller. And hey, even if you're not vibing with that month's particular selection of books, you can totally skip risk-free. First up, one of my most anticipated thrillers of the year, Kill For Me, Kill For You. This one primarily follows these two I want to say three different characters and two of them happen to meet by chance one night and decide hey if you kill for me i'll kill for you or you know just how a normal conversation goes right the third character in here she gets attacked along with her husband by a strange man um, who invades their house one night however the strange invader this man he gets away and leaves our character severely traumatized and so in some thriller fashion that only makes sense when it comes to these type of books all three of these characters along with some previous behind the scene events they're all connected her web connects them all if you know you know next up we have a pick i'm very keen and interested in getting into and this is here after by amy lynn this one is interesting to me because it's a memoir and how the story this memoir is told is through these fragmented segments snippets or vignettes um, of this author's life basically the story of how she met the love of her life his death and the aftermath of it all Here's just like a quick example, like look how short that is. Just one page snippets, one chapter at a time. But there you have it. Those are my selections for this month. Again, use my code Elias to get your first book for only $9.99. And thank you once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. With that being said, back to your regular broadcast. Okay, all right, here we go. The first book that I read in February was with my Patreon book club, and we read Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chipeko. This one was a delightful surprise. I originally thought going in, I don't know why, but I did know that it was like a supernatural paranormal adult fantasy book, right? And so I was like, oh my God, werewolves. Don't know where that thought came to mind. In a supernatural paranormal book, if I had to choose between vampires and werewolves, I'm a doggy kind of guy, you know? You know, I like cute, cuddly, furry things, hence why I was always Team Jacob in the movies, of course. <laughs> but anyways, this is a vampire fantasy, and we are following a vampire hunter, the irony. And so this was adults, and this was a recommendation from one of the patrons who thought I would really enjoy it. And suffice to say, I really, really did. I think in this case, in this particular book, you sort of have to care about the characters and the relationship for it to work. For you to, I think, enjoy most of the story aspect because because relationship and characters aside, the story itself isn't that great in my opinion. Kira, stop. He's trying to open the pantry door, but I put rubber bands on the handle so that he can open it. What are you doing? Kira, stop it. He's becoming an absolute menace these days. I think for it to work, for you to enjoy the book in general, you would have to really care about said characters and this really interesting dynamic of a relationship. So we're following this renowned, disgraced vampire hunter who undercovers this huge conspiracy revolving around this truce between vampires and humans and some hideous supernatural occurrences and experiments that threatens, you know, that peace treaty between these um, two species. So he embarks on this journey along with these two royal vampires, okay? This is a really interesting relationship because it was one of the first polyamorous 
supernatural relationships that I've ever read. I am absolutely a little biased because I cared about and even liked the pairing a little bit better um, between the two guys versus the girl. Um, but hey, it worked. It was very, very spicy. What I also really liked was that the romance isn't at the forefront of the book, but it is there. It's pretty big. It's impactful. And it's overall why I really liked the book as it is. Because story-wise, for me, was pretty slow. It really didn't take off, I want to say, maybe halfway through the book. And some of you might agree that it does take a while. However, it's because it's a story I've seen regurgitated a lot in other fantasy books. But I still think that there is enough meat um, for it to be, you know, standing on its own. It's a duology, I believe, with the second book coming out in the spring. I'm very excited to see where that story goes because it's a totally different setting and location. I don't want to give anything away, but the first book heavily sets up the events for the second book. I am very interested in reading, you know, and exploring the complicated relationship that this vampire has with these two other vampires who were already in a relationship. The main character himself was a little burdensome to read in the beginning. He was just this self-deprecating, depressed, hot-headed, hot-tempered warrior. You know, I can I can relate with some of those attributes, but it was just not giving. It's just a little irritable and tiresome to read uh, from his POV in the very beginning. However, I got used to it. I couldn't understand where he was coming from. And sort of in the end, he became sort of like this really angry, fluffy kitten, especially with how the two other vampires in the relationship treated him and viewed him as. It was just really funny and really cute in general. But the biggest plot twist of them all was that our hot-tempered, hot-blooded, self-deprecating, depressed warrior turns out to be a submissive, breedable power bottom. You heard that right. It was glorious to read the dynamic between the um, male vampire and Remy. So the vampire's names are Zhaodan and Zaiden. And Zaiden and Remy's relationship their pairing, ugh, every single time, you know, they, they did it. It was, it was so funny. There was a chapter in here. There was a part in the book where they would have sex over and over again. And it was just really funny because the scenes of them actually doing the deed, there were like these short fragments, these little paragraphs of them doing it really sporadically. It was just them having sex on the ground, in the dirt, in the castle, on top of the laboratory table. It was just overall a really funny and just really sweet relationship um, dynamic that they had. And I really, really enjoyed it. But towards the end of the book, there was a twist I did not see coming. I was actually genuinely surprised. And I'm very curious to see how it'll get resolved in book two, along with how the duology will close. Pretty happy that it's a duology, not a trilogy, because um, you can only take so much as you can take in. Right, Remy? <laughs> But in the end, I'm giving this a 4 out of 5. It could have been a 5 star if the beginning half of the book, you know, was strong enough for me. But alas, it still had a great, strong ending, ending the first arc. I mean, moving on to the second book. But needless to say, I had a really great time. So after finishing Silver Under Nightfall, I was still in the mood to read some fantasy. And so I was just browsing along my Goodreads shelf, and I came across... The Sword of Kagan by M.L. Wang. I was like, wow, this story sounds interesting. It's like a Japanese martial arts inspired fantasy where the essential main characters have the ability to basically like bend and manipulate water and ice, sort of like Avatar The Last Airbender, you know? I was looking at this cover and I saw that there was a special editions on Goodreads because on Goodreads you can like see special editions or covers that this book has, right? So it took me to this website where you could see The Sword of Kagan's special editions, their covers, right? It was a non-negotiable for me because the price point for these covers are insane and I understand it, but at the same time, like, no, no way. I think it was price marked at a reasonable price, but I think for it to be shipped and mailed to me would have like added another additional 30 to $40 on top of it. So I think the whole accumulative price was like at $70 and I was like, absolutely not, there's no way. And so I was exploring the website and I came across a set of covers that I was like, wow, these covers are really cool. And the author's name really intrigued me. I was like, this is weird. I've never heard of these fantasy books before. Is it self-published? What is it? And suffice to say, I went down the wildest, chaotic, most fun rabbit hole I've ever gone down. I guess speaking about holes in general, since we're already you know, talking about Silver and Nightfall going into this one, but this was a rabbit hole. I genuinely, wink wink, had a whole lot of fun going down in. So I'm going to insert the first cover here. But this is a series of web novels. Here is the thing. This series, already, the beginning of the year, my favorite. 
so far that I've read of all the books. It was just so bizarre, but like in the best way possible. This book series is actually originally a web novel. And this author, his original web novel pen name is Nobody103, which was also stamped on the book along with his real name. So I thought that was so interesting. And that led me to what the book was about. And I saw the Goodreads ratings. The Goodreads ratings for these books, each individual book, the series in general, astronomical. It was so wild. And I was like, um, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt. You know, I'm going to be a little hesitant. Hmm, I'm very skeptical. We shall see. And to my surprise, this self-published web novel has an audiobook, has an ebook, and has physical copies. But these physical copies are all like special editions. I was like, you know what, I'll hold off and see if I can get a ebook or an audiobook somewhere. If you have an Audible account or something like that, you can listen to an audiobook. But to my utter surprise, my library carried these ebooks. And you know what? I was like, it's meant to be. And I borrowed the first two books from the library. So I read and finished the first two books and found that the third and fourth book were on a three to six week wait on a hiatus. And I was like, fuck that. Went ahead and went on Amazon and got the two Kindle editions of this book. Basically the best $10 I've ever spent, both books combined. So I remember just being blown away by the first book and went immediately ahead into the second, finishing that, then acquiring the last two books and then completed that. And it's honestly sort of like a giant blur in my head because I literally do not even remember the majority of those days aside from just reading this series. And then by the end of like the third day, I think it was like maybe 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning, I put my candle down, put my head on the table and let out the biggest sigh. I was sitting right here. I was sitting right here on this table. It was just pure satisfaction, utter bliss. Let me get into why you should read this series. Also, I want to point out if you can't find this series at your local library or listen to the audiobook, you can read this series for free online. And no, I'm not talking about pirating or anything like that. This series it's free to read on a website where the author originally published the web novel. But I did hear the ebook and the physical book and the audiobook are all basically updated versions of the web novel, like some grammatical errors here and there, but the story remains the same. The characters, the dialogue is just some grammatical errors and punctuations and stuff like that. Minor details, right? But you can read the whole thing for free on the website, which I will have linked down below. You're welcome. So if you like anything that has to do with like time travel, time loops, um, isekai animes, like the one that I can think of right away is RE0, where the main character in that anime, every single time he dies, gets murdered, gets killed or whatever, he restarts at a certain checkpoint um, in this fantasy world that he was transported to after he was accidentally killed in the real world. Reading it and watching it unfold in front of me felt like watching the biggest giant isekai anime ever. I loved it. I ate it up. So we're following our main character who accidentally gets caught up in this time loop where he realizes that no matter what, even if he gets killed or whatever, that specific entire month resets no matter what he does. And so he goes out on his mission to find out what exactly and why exactly this is happening. This book does contain some of my like favorite tropes like magical schools, weak characters who suddenly become really overpowered. Basically has the overall similar tropes that an isekai anime has. Most of the isekai animes that I've watched are very, very similar. They're all regurgitated. They all have that same character who gets killed in the real world. They're still transported to the fantasy world and they either attend a magical school, wield certain strong magical abilities, and just get really overpowered overall. You know, super OP. And this book series is no exception. It was really, really interesting in the beginning because our main character doesn't read or feel like a main character in various ways. He feels like a side character almost because the time loop that he gets caught up in sort of happened because of one essential character who was already aware of what was happening. And that other character felt more like a main character to me reading about it because he carried a lot of these certain main character tropes that I've read in other fantasies. He's strong headed, very, very powerful. So our main character, whose name is Zorian, is a 15 year old student at this prestigious academy. And every month it starts off with him you know, leaving to this academy. And so once he gets caught up in this time loop, he makes it his mission to go off and hone his abilities. This isn't sort of like your typical magical standard route. Don't get me wrong, he is a very flawed gray character. He does a lot of things that are just so stupid and irritable, but he learns from those mistakes. And how he does it in a way is very interesting. There are attributes to mind magic and soul magic. Magic I haven't read in any other book before. And the way the author describes it, goes about it, is so detailed and simple. 
it is very easy to understand and digest. And even though it is sort of like YA, it doesn't really read like YA. It's like one of those books that are written as adult, but honestly, it's accessible to any age. And I feel like this series has that going on for it. So the way Zorian traverses the time loop is also very interesting as well. You may think that, oh, it's going to get repetitive after a while, right? Living the same month over and over again, you know, while trying to understand it, break it, understand the mystery of it. However, I got to say, the author is a genius at utilizing this time loop because each book, each arc, in general, because the web novel is like a whole web novel. And doing research on it, apparently it's shorter than a regular web novel, which is insane to me because fitting it all in like a physical book, you have four books, four distinct books, each around six to 700 pages already as is. So that was kind of crazy to me to begin with. Anyways, each arc, I gotta say, got better and better and better as I kept on reading. I really, really loved the first one. The second one was good, but the third and the fourth book just completely blew out of the water for me. It was so, so fucking good, especially the fourth book, five out of five stars. Some of the most satisfactory concluding chapters I've ever read. Like if I had to give some critique to the book, I wished it was a little bit more fleshed out. I wanted some more POV from different characters. And the other critique is that this is not going to be some of the best writing you'll ever read. Like it's self-published. However, this writing is still by far way better than some of the romanticy books that I've read out there. So there's also heavy instances of like heavy info dumping or paragraphs or pages where the author would describe like a certain ability or how it works. And it got a little info dumpy after a while, but those were just like minor things, okay? I overall had the best time reading this book. It's just, it's just really fun. It is just really, really fun to see how this one character, the side irritable character, he in the beginning was like a little brat. He was irritable to everyone. He was pessimistic. He was just a little self-indulgent know-it-all, you know, just not making any friends, keeping to himself, taking other people for granted, and just a little above average with his magical abilities. However, as the series progresses, he learns that just mundane magic in general it's just the beginning, just a surface, just a surface level magic. You find that there is structured and unstructured magic. Um, structured magic is what you would call into shape, call into form, physical form. And unstructured magic is just like pure chaos. There's like mind magic, will magic, and also arcanic magic. And what I mean by this is arcanic talking magical spiders. They're so, they're so cool. I, okay, I'm not gonna say anything else, but, but you have arcanic talking spiders, you have hydras, time loops, magical schools, you have sovereign, powerful teleporting gates, primordial beings, dimensions, just so many things that were just so interesting for me to read from. It was nothing I've read from before, but very familiar at the same time. If you like books like The Scholar Man's Trilogy by Naomi Novik, or The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake, it has like the best attributes from, you know, those type of books. I am making it my main mission for y'all to go ahead and pick this up. You know, go on Libby, see if they have the ebooks, because I don't think um, the physical copies of these books exist in libraries just because they're special editions. They also have it on Audible as well, or you can read it for free on the website, which I'll have linked down below. At the very start, we have our main protagonist who is not a Mary Sue whatsoever, which I was grateful for, but he starts off rather pragmatic, irritable, and really, really negative. Basically, just a main character we can't really relate with, and just really annoying overall. The fact that he gets dragged into this time loop by a spell that wasn't even directed to him just made it even more interesting. For a book that revolved around time loops and time travel, it didn't feel pretentious or repetitive in that sense. And it was so fun and interesting to see what paths or choices our main character, Zorian, would make. You know, one day in a different month, he would find out one character going to a different dungeon, and in that dungeon, he would find like a certain creature or magical ability. In another month, and another day, he would do a different thing and just a different dialogue. It was just a bunch of mini side quests, a plethora of just these different things our character could do. And it felt like playing a game in a way. It almost felt like playing this game called Elden Ring for me. I really, really love that game. It's sort of like this open world magical fantasy game where you're playing the single character and there's just so much in this world. I don't want to get into it, but if you know, you know. Basically endless possibilities. However, these possibilities are indeed finite. However, these possibilities while finite, it's just really fun in a roundabout way how our main character just goes about and achieves a bunch of different things. So each path felt like its own little narrative that Zoran went on. You know, finding out if it was indeed really, really difficult to like traverse, like maybe go through this one routine or just like a different routine that made it a little bit easier, but not as maybe strategic or saving this person's life or whatever. Literally for a 600 plus page book, I flew through every single one. You know, it's been a while since I just sat down and just become so utterly engrossed in a book where I literally do nothing but just read and finish in one sitting, especially for a really big fantasy 
like series as this. So each book and each arc, how it goes along with our main character Zorian trying to figure out, you know, what to do in this time loop. Like in book two, it expands beyond, you know, the magic school. Book three, it goes on like different parts of the world. And in book four, like eventually breaking out and the implications of what happens when you break out? You know, what happens when you become too overpowered, too OP with all this knowledge coming out with all the people who you have like interacted with in this time loop? But what happens when you interact with them after the time loop? You know, all of these things, all of these different things, you know, trying to save different people at the same time. So, so fucking fun. I think that's pretty much all I have to say, but I'm just going to give a bunch of like key phrases for you. So, you know, to entice y'all because I really, really want you guys to read this series. It is just so, so good. If you want to read a riveting time travel, time loop book series that revolves around vampires, talking or canning spiders, world made from a body of a dragon, magic schools, leveling up, power cubes, elementals, primordials, godlike artifacts, and magical bees, you're welcome. Please pick the series up. Like I am literally pushing the series up. Like if you're not really into fantasy, this is the type of series that is perfect for you. It doesn't get like too chaotic or just too much in general from like other high fantasy books that I've read. It's very, very accessible. It helps that it um, starts off like a little bit YA, but the time loop goes on for a very, very, very long time. You know, lots of knowledge and education and just sweat, blood and tears just goes into a lot of, you know, the main characters and the abilities and just the learning curve. The trajectory from point A to point B, holy fuck, it is, it is beyond, beyond the scope of what you think is going to happen like literally you will not expect the direction this book will go in the plot twists the the creatures and the people just the things that he comes across and traverses after finishing the four arcs it truly felt like i read and finished a 16 book series it was honestly so fulfilling in a way that was just so satisfactory like i can't explain it like i feel so fulfilled so full it's like just so happy after finishing the book series like even after finishing the fourth arc typically in other books i you know get in a reading slump you know i'm just sitting there absorbing and dwelling you know what just happened however after finishing it i immediately wanted to dive into another fantasy it just reinvigorated that curiosity that spark that i had for just reading fantasy books in general so if you're a fantasy lover this is a perfect book series for you and yes while it is self-published with not like the greatest writing out there i read by far worse books um, you know, that are traditionally published that have really just trash writing. So don't let that fool you. And I get that our main character who may come across as like the most undignified, baratiest person ever in like the first 100 to 200 pages. Don't let that fool you. Don't let that stop you. Okay. It's a journey. Hello. It's a journey you must take and accept in order to just become an overall, just powerful godlike mage <laughs> in this world. You know, your journey. Okay. You know, I have read books that dealt with like time travel and time loops before, but this series does it so, so fucking well. Just so fascinating. Like the key word here, fascinating. It is just so interesting how all of these different concepts come into mind with this author and how he puts it forth in real time in these pages that we're able to grasp and understand. It's just chef's kiss beautiful so there you go i said my piece i think like i dedicated like a whole 20 minutes just talking about this book series as it deserves so if you're looking for any fantasy recommendations pick the series up it is just so fantastic so so fun like i honestly kid you not i think you will have a really really great fun time like i truly and honestly believe if you do not like the series that's totally fine. You're just a fucking hater. Like, boo-hoo. But please pick up Mother of Learning. I don't even think I even said the title of the series. Mother of Learning. Um, when I was recommending this book and talking about this book series to my patrons, I was like, like, I literally just had finished it recently. And I was like, you know, this new series called Mother is Learning. <laughs> and one of them was like, oh, that should have been the title of the book. Five out of five stars. Like, each book, very powerful, very strong in of itself. Just holds all together very well individually. But all together, those four different arts <sighs> changed my life forever. Loved it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary folk. That is my review and recommendation for Mother of Learning by Nobody103. Pick the series up and come back and, you know, talk to me in the comments on Instagram. DM me. I would love to know all of your thoughts. Like, this is a series where I can see myself rereading over and over and not get tired of it. Like, me rereading a Brandon Sanderson book? Uh, yeah, maybe like five to ten years down the line. But this one, I'm already gonna make the first book a Patreon book club for next month. 
So, you know, if you're leading towards that opportunity of that possibility of reading, you know, that book next month with me and my patrons, my Patreon will also be linked down below. That is all of the books that I read in February, a successful and productive month, I gotta say. And I'm very excited for March already because the first week of March, I already completed another book and it's also a five-star read. Um, spoilers, it's The Story of Kagan and I Cried. So yeah, with that being said, please let me know your top recent reads that you've read so far. And I will see you all soon with a new video.